Chronicles 5.13.65. So in the last five years, in the previous five years, not counting 23 because we don't have those figures yet, the P.E. increased by nine in three of those five years. If it were to increase by nine again from 16.67, that would bring us to around $513.65 from the current price of $361.23. Hey guys, in this week's episode of um, this week's winning stocks, that's the week covering January 2nd to January 26th of 2024. One of the companies that I found interesting was Humana. Dropped considerably the last three weeks, especially the last two. And it was at $361.23. But notice that it moved down considerably. And it already started to move back up. And although it was only $361.23, Yahoo analysts estimate that it could go up to $489.82 in the next 12 months. So, it's a two-star, and I decided that this is the stock that I'm going to do an analysis on and put in the channel because I'm also going to suggest this to the, this week's option pick group. So we come over to Yahoo Finance. We see it's $361.23. It moved up $5.87 a share on Friday alone, and now it is, well, basically it's Sunday, it's after midnight right now, so it is Sunday when the market is closed, but it's already up 77 cents in after hours, so we'll see if it continues to move up when the markets are opened, but let's jump into the analysis for this company. So, we see Humana Inc., ticker symbol HUM. The last five years, the low PE rate, well, actually, the figures haven't come out for 2023 yet because it's still January of 2024. But we have the figures for 2018 through 2022. And in 2018, the low PE was 19.81. In 2019, it was 11.21. In 2020, it was 8.24. Remember, 2020 was COVID lockdowns. 2021, it was 16.21. And 2022, it was 16.22. So, if we look at the last five years, well, actually, in the most recent two years, 21 and 22, the low PE was at 16, 1621 and 1622. 2018, it was 19. 2019, it dropped to 11. And 2020, which was COVID lockdowns, it dropped to 8.24. Where is it right now? Right now, the low PE, the right now, the PE ratio is 18.05. However, I showed you that candlestick chart and I showed you it moved down. It already started to move back up. It started to move back up and it's at 18.05 
right now. Where was it at when when it initially moved down and I caught it? It was at 16.67. So it's already began its climb back up. Now, if we look at the high and the low prices for Humana over the last five years, in 2018, they were at $240.94 at their low price. They moved up to $341.14 for their high price. That was a gain of 41.59% throughout the course of that year, or an increase, I should say. In 2019, they were at $225.31 at their low price. They moved up to $360.44 for their high price. That was a gain of 59.98% throughout the course of the year. Now, COVID year, they were at $208.63 at their low price. They moved up to $442.10 for their high price that year. So during that year, their increase was 111.91%. Twenty twenty one, they were at three hundred and sixty seven dollars and forty nine cents at their low price, four hundred and sixty three dollars and eight cents at their high price. It was just a gain of twenty six point oh one percent that year. But in twenty twenty two, three hundred and fifty eight dollars and seven cents for their low price. $557.92 for their high price. So that was a gain of 55.81% in those 12 months for that year. So now we've already seen the estimate that Yahoo analysts feel that they can move up to. Let me do my own estimate. And if I look at the low and the high PE for these years, between the low and the high, it's an average from 19 to 28. It's an average of about 9. 11 to 17 is an increase of about 6. 8 to 17 is an increase of about 9. 16 to 20 is just an increase of 4. And 16 to 25, it's an increase of about 9. So in three of those five years, the P.E. ratio from low to high increased by like 9. Now, the current P.E. is 18.05. But what was the low P.E. I quoted at? 16.67. Okay. Let's assume... 16.67 was the lowest PE. I'm going to say 16.67 plus 9. We have 25.64 times the earnings per share. 20.01 equals 513.65. So in the last five years, in the previous five years, not counting 23 because we don't have those figures yet, the PE increased by nine in three of those five years. If it were to increase by 9 again from 16.67, that would bring us to around $513.65 from the current price of $361.23. So we've let's calculate one more thing. 
I don't feel this will be necessary because the P.E. already started moving up. But let's say the P.E. was to drop to 11.21. That's the lowest PE it's been to in the previous five years, not counting 2020, which was COVID lockdowns, because I see that as an anomaly. So, 1120, 1121, I should say, times 20.01 would be this stock would drop to $224.31. But as I said, in this case, I'm not concerned about that because it was already at 16.67, which is in line with where it's been in 21 and 22. And it's already started moving back up. It was at 16.67. And it's already at 18.05. So, now that we've seen the prices and where the prices could go, let's take a look at the fundamentals for this stock. And if we look at the sales, we see that. In 2018, they made $56,912,000,000. As of 2018, they made $56,912,000,000. profit margin. Let's look at 2019. They made $64,888,000,000. After paying expenses, they retained $2,707,000,000. That's a 4.17% profit margin. In 2020, they made seventy-seven million one hundred and fifty-five million. Remember, they were fighting COVID. They made a little more that year. Well, they actually made a bit more that year. They retained three billion three hundred and sixty-seven million. That's a four point three six percent profit margin. In 2021, they had 83 billion, 64 million in overall sales and revenue. They retained 2 billion, 933 million. That's a 3.53% profit margin. And in 2022, they had 92 billion, 870 million. But they retained two billion eight hundred and six million. That's a three point zero two percent profit margin. So their margins are very small. In other words, when I look at the amount of money they're bringing in overall in sales and revenue, and what percentage of that money they're retaining. They're retaining a decent amount in the, in terms of their net income, how much they're keeping after expenses, but the net income is only a decent amount because the sales and revenue is a very big amount. But if we look at it in terms of the percentages, they're keeping what? Between 2 and 4% in terms of their profit margin. So they're not keeping much. 
Now let's look at their return on equity and their debt to equity. If we look at their return on equity in 2018, it was 16.56. 2019, it was 22.49. 2020, it was 24.53. 2021, it was 18.21. And 2022, it was 18.26%. Not fabulous, but I would consider it pretty decent, particularly going from 19 and into 2020, where their return on equity was in the 20s. The 16, I could live with. The 18s are decent but I, I liked them moving into the 20s. But as far as their debt to equity, it's not fabulous, but we know that for debt to equity, we like for it to stay below 200%. And they've accomplished that, 150.10 in 2018. 141.54 in 2019, 154.73 in 2020. In 2021 and 2022, it increased 175.46 and 180.12, but it's still below 200, which means that they would have a decent balance sheet. For the balance sheet, we want to see the, um, we want to see the current assets being above or exceeding the current liabilities, which they do. And we want to see for all five years, which they do. And we want to see the total assets exceeding the total liabilities for all five years, which they do. We don't see it doubling or tripling or anything like that, but we see it decently above. They do pay a dividend all five years. Notice they pay dividends. 265 million in 2018, 291 million in 2019, 323 million in 2020, 354 million in 2021, and 392 million in 2022. Now we're going to get back to dividends a little later because if you're into dividend stocks, there's something that's really important that you want to look at, and we're going to get down to that. But before we get to that, we know a company makes money in three ways. One way it makes money is by doing what they do for a living. And what does Humana do? They sell health insurance plans. You pay for those insurance plans every month, and hopefully your doctor's bills are less than what the insurance plans are costing, and that's how they make their money. The other way they make money is by borrowing. And a third way they can make money is by constantly selling more shares of their stock. Well, for you as an investor, you really want to see a company making money in one way, by what they do for a living. You don't want to see them borrowing too much money. Borrowing sometimes is okay because you may borrow money to get equipment or whatever, which will help you to make even more money. But you don't want to see them borrowing excessively. And you don't want to see them constantly selling more shares of stock. That's bad. 
what you want to see them doing is buying back more shares of their own stock. And if I look at this company, for the last five years, not counting 2023, as we said, they bought back more shares of their own stock. In 2018, they bought back 1 billion, 45 million in shares. 2019, 1 billion, 12 million shares. 2020, 1 billion, 820 million in shares. 2021, 79 million in shares. And 2022, 2 billion, 96 million in shares. So, in terms of stocks, I feel they've done a good job. They're not selling shares, they're buying back shares. Changing current debt and changing long-term debt, we're going to jump over that because we already covered debt when we looked at the balance sheet. We saw that their assets were exceeding their debt. Now we're going to jump down to the free cash flow. And the reason that the free cash flow is so important Free cash flow is the money they have left over at the end of the year. And the reason I see that free cash flow as so important is because whatever dividends they're paying you, they're paying you from that free cash flow. And if they don't have enough free cash flow to pay you those dividends, what that means is that they're borrowing money just to pay you the dividend. They're just paying you the dividend to keep you buying their stocks, but they don't really have the money to pay you the dividend. And if that's the case, what does that mean? That means if you're intending to hold this stock long term, consider the fact that eventually that dividend is probably going to stop because they can't afford to be paying it to you anyway. In any event, they have free cash flow. Let's look at the years. In 2018, 1,561,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,
how much money do they have to pay each shareholder for their shares? Technically, that's what the book value is. But in reality, that's not the way it works out. Because most companies aren't going to close overnight. And when they start to close slowly and people figure out what's going on, they start selling those shares. And there's two things that affect stock prices primarily. There's a lot of indirect causes, but there's two direct causes. When more people sell than buy, the price drops. And when more people buy than sell, the price goes up. And that happens from day to day. So when people start selling, the price is going to drop no matter what the book value is. And I have a video on the channel, The Truth About Book Value, that you can look at and it explains that to you and actually uses a real live example. So, But in any event, their book value is at $137.00 and 67 cents. Rather than looking at book value, I more so like to focus on are they selling more shares from year to year or buying back more shares from year to year. Their PB ratio is 2.62. Beta, which means how volatile is this stock, is 0.49. The last dividend well, the last ex dividend date was december twenty eighth of twenty three but it seems we just passed a dividend date where the dividend was given out that was january twenty sixth of twenty four it says and that was 88 cents a share. Now, how many shares? There were 123.11 million outstanding shares of Humana. And of those 123.11 million outstanding shares, how many were held by insiders, those who work or in, work in or are involved with the company? That was 0.16%, under 1%. But even though it's a, such a small number, under 1%, remember it's a, under 1% of 123.11 million. And by institutions, 94.26%. So a lot of large institutions and banks and retirement and so forth are invested in this company, which is a, usually, generally a good sign because institutional holders are going to be much less fickle letting go of the stock for any real little reason. They'll hold on more longer term, which makes a more stable investment. In any event, that is our analysis on Humana. Just felt that I would drop this because it will be being, it's already mentioned in this week's winning stocks, and it will also be presented in this week's option picks. In any event, have a great weekend, guys, and have a great market week coming up, and I will speak to you in the next video.